Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we are going to be in the New Jerusalem Holy Bible and we're going to read the four start reading the four gospels from the New Jerusalem Holy Bible. Sometimes when we keep hearing the same verses over and over again in the in the regular King James modern version of the Holy Bible, we can um, lose track or lose sight of some valuable points. But here it's spoken in a different format, in a different way, will help enrich us and give us more um, in the way of understanding and give us more what what we need to grow in our walk with our Lord. So, here it says the introduction to the synoptic gospels. The gospels are not lives or biographies of Jesus, but are four versions of the record of the good news brought by Jesus. Jesus himself preached the coming of God's rule, the establishment of his sovereignty, breaking through the bonds of evil, sin, and death, to which all people had been subject. The Gospels are full also of wonder at the mystery of Jesus himself and why a shameful death was the means by which God must triumph in him. At the heart of the Gospel tradition is the first preaching of the good news by Jesus by the Apostles. The tradition was handed down in the community in the form of stories, parables, and short sayings remembered for their teaching or the light they threw on the person or message of Jesus. To some extent, these stories would be molded to the bring out, our, out their lesson. For example, the fulfillment of scripture in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus are their application to Christian behavior in the world. Their tradition was expressed also in hymns and short summaries to be learnt by heart. Which of the Gospels was the first to be written is still in dispute, although it is clear that the three synoptic, i.e. with the same eye, Gospels are interrelated. The most common view is that Mark, was the first, and that this was expanded independently by Matthew and Luke, each using a low, excuse me, a now lost collection of the sayings of Jesus. Their traditional view is that Mark, well, excuse me, that Matthew came first and was used by Luke, but Mark finally making a digest of them both. In either view, the Gospels are the end product of a long process of development in the Christian community under the guidance of the Spirit. That would be the Holy Spirit, the one that will bring all things to our remembrance. Nor is it possible to establish firmly the date or authorship of these Gospels. Tradition from the second century holds that Matthew the Apostle stands authority for Matthew that Mark represents the tradition of Peter, and that the author of Luke was the companion of Paul. But the identity of the authors is less important than the guarantee of their material by the tradition of the early community, of which each must have been an authorized interpreter. Of the date, we can only be sure that they all stem from the last 40 years of the first century. The Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is the Gospel of the Kingdom of Heaven. This points to three principal emphases. One, while Mark concentrates on the gradual unfolding of the disciples' understanding of Jesus, Matthew stresses from the first that Jesus is a king. He is a noble and dignified figure who deserves and receives homage from all around him. Already in his earthly life, 
he is seen as the exalted, as the exalted Christ, the kingdom of heaven still to be completed, but already strongly associated with the community which Jesus founded is the fulfillment of God's plan for Israel. So the church is the true Israel, the recipient of God's promises, which goes out to all nations in the power of Christ. Matthew is the most Semitic of the Gospels, constantly touching on Jewish and rabbinic customs and ways of thought and argument, stretching, stressing that Jesus fulfills the hope of the Old Testament, both in general and in minute detail. There is a strong and typically Jewish interest in the final retribution about which Matthew is warning, is full of warnings. The main part of the gospel, apart from the infancy stories and the passion narrative, is divided into five sections, each with a narrative and a teaching section, by analogy with the five books of the Jewish law. Matthew is more interested in Mark, in Jesus' teaching, which he assembles in five great discourses, each with its own subject, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, chapters 5 through 7, the Missionary Discourse, chapters 10 through 11, Parables, chapter 13, the Community, chapter 18, and the Last Discourse, chapters 24 through 25. So this Jewish Christian scribe shows that Jesus is not only the Davidic Messiah, but also the lawgiver, our second Moses. Plans of the book. Goes section one, the birth and infancy of Jesus. Two, the kingdom of heaven is announced. Three, the kingdom of heaven is preached. Four, the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Five, the church, first fruits of the kingdom of heaven. Six, the approaching advent of the kingdom of heaven. And seven, passion and resurrection. The gospel according to Matthew. I don't want to make these really long lessons as we go through the the um, four gospels. I want them to be short enough that you can spend a few minutes each day, you know, listening to them and letting the messages soak in and see where in your life you can apply them as as we're learning and going through and seeing this from a different point of view in a different light in the New Jerusalem Holy Bible. So I'm going to keep them to 10 minutes. So rather, no, I'm going to go ahead and read chapter one because it's the, um, it is the genealogy, the birth and infancy of Jesus, the ancestry of Jesus, role of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham, Abraham, father, Isaac, Isaac, father, Jacob, Jacob, father, Judah, and his brothers. Judah fathered Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Per Perzer fathered Hezron. Hezron fathered, fathered Ram. Ram fathered Amenadab. Amenadab fathered Nashon. Nashon father, fathered Salom. Salom fathered Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Re Boaz fathered Obed whose mother was Ruth. Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered King David. David fathered Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Excuse me. Okay. Solomon fathered Rehoabam, Boam. Rehoabam, Boam, fathered Abinajah. Abinajah fathered Asa. Asa fathered Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat fathered Joram. Joram fathered Uzziah. Uzziah fathered Jaham. Jaham fathered Ahaz. Ahaz fathered Hezekiah. 
Hezekiah fathered Manasseh. Manasseh fathered Amon. Amon fathered Josiah. And Josiah fathered Jeconiah and his brothers. Then the transportation to Babylon took place. After the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah fathered Sheotiel. Sheotiel fathered Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel fathered Abu Ud. Abu Ud fathered El E El Elakim. Elakim fathered Azor. Azor followed Zadok. Zadok fathered Achim. Achim fathered Eliud. Eliud fathered Eleazar. Eleazar fathered Mathan. Mathan fathered Jacob. And Jacob fathered Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called Christ. The sum of generations is, therefore, fourteen from Abraham to David. 14 from David to the Babylonian deportation, and 14 from the Babylonian deportation to Christ. This continues here just a little bit more. Joseph adopts Jesus as his son. This is how Jesus Christ became to be born. When his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being an upright man and wanting to spare her dis disgrace, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this when suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. And you, will must, you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to the fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. Look, the virgin is with child, and will give birth to a son, whom they will call him, call Emmanuel, a name which means, God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord told him to do. He took his wife to his home. He had not had intercourse with her when she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. And that takes us to chapter 2, and that's where we'll pick up tomorrow, God willing. And I'm going to try to keep these just short. I don't want them to be over 15 minutes, so you can fit them in your days. And, uh, and we can um, gobble this up <laughs> and apply it in our lives as much as possible, right? And as always, <laughs> I love you.